Assalamu alaikum YouTube, this is Said Mirza. In today's video, I wanted to look at the sun, moon, and stars in the cosmology of the Quran. This video is based on my work, Cosmology of the Quran, The Seven Skies, and the Fixed Ground, which can be downloaded for free from millionarereason.com. Now, on the left side, we have a picture of the sun, and on the right side, we have a picture of the moon. And you can see clearly that they are both of the same size. And this is not an optical illusion, my friends. You can verify this for yourself. Go out and look at a full moon, and then if the conditions are right, when it's hazy, go look, at, look out at the sun. You will see that they are both of the same size. Now, I know this is very hard to believe for people who have been brainwashed by the schooling system and by science. Science would have us believe that the sun is many, 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 many times bigger than the earth and, uh, and obviously the moon as well. Uh, but that is not what we see when we look out with our own eyes. And I am confident that they are of the same size because they are both a pair according to Quran. And we will look into that uh, in a little bit. But let's talk about the sun. Sun worship is an ancient cult. And uh, this is one of the main postulates of the religion of science, the heliocentric model, which states that the earth and planets revolve around the sun, which is at the center of the universe. Now, a lot of people don't know that the architect of this model, Nicholas Copernicus, who lived during the Renaissance era, he recycled this idea for, of the sun being the center of the solar system from Aristarchus of Samos, who is an ancient Greek astronomer. So, Nicholas Copernicus basically resurrected the sun worship cult and uh, uh, made it a postulate of the religion of science. Now, the Quran talks about the sun and the moon being a pair. Like it talks about a lot of other things being a pair, because everything that God has created, He created in uh, of two kinds or or as a pair. Let's look at the verse, uh, chapter fifty one, verse forty nine, and from everything we created pairs that you might take heed. So it follows that the sun and moon are a pair because they are used uh, in the Quran across many verses together, mm, and we have already established that they are of the same size, which can be verified again with your own eyes. They are both locked in a circuit, chasing after each other. They both produce light, and they are both to be used together to reckon time. Now let's look at many verses in the Quran that talk about this uh, postulates. First of all, the Quran never states that the ground is orbiting the sun. And it never states that the sun and stars are of the same class or category. And it never states that the moon reflects the light of the sun. On the other hand, science claims that the moon is orbiting the earth, the earth is orbiting the sun, and the sun along with the rest of the solar system is orbiting the center of the Milky Way galaxy. Now, I want to bring your attention to the fact that the Quran never states that the sun, uh, that the earth is moving around the sun. It states that the sun and moon are in motion and that the, the ground, the land, the al ard is fixed, it's stationary. He created the skies and the ground with the truth. He coils the night over the day and he coils the day over the night. And he has subjected the sun and the moon, each traveling to a named term. Is he not the mighty, the forgiving? Chapter 39, verse 5. Now, obviously, a lot of people who are pro-science will jump in and say, look, it says he coils the day over the night and he coils the night over the day. And that can only happen if it, the surface is a sphere or a globe or a ball or whatever. But if you actually read the verse carefully, it's not saying that he coils the night over the the land over the earth it's he said god is saying he coils the night over the day and he coils the day over the night and if you ever go out and look at sunset and sunrise you will see that they uh, that when the sun is going uh, when the sun is setting you will notice that the uh, the intensity of the light is decreasing it's almost like there is uh, at the top the, it's darkness and at the bo uh, and at the horizon it's light and that light is being diminished and the darkness is increasing and the inverse of that is happening during sunrise so this is all this verse is saying but even if you have uh, some skepticism about this verse don't worry we have many other verses in the quran let's look at prophet abraham's argument now we are led to believe that the ancients were a bunch of savages who had no clue about how the 
or the universe worked and they didn't have any knowledge that is incorrect the ancients had more knowledge true knowledge about how the about the celestial and terrestrial phenomena than the modern man what is modern man doing all day he's watching tv consuming fictions and Id and uh, falsehoods and being brainwashed by propaganda prophet abraham is considered a man of faith and he is definitely a man of intelligence a man of insight in the quran so did he think that the sun and the moon were uh, that the sun was uh, stationary and, and that the earth was revolving around the sun? No. Hast thou not observed him who disputed with Abraham concerning his Lord when God had given him kingdom? When Abraham said, My Lord is he who gives life and causes death, he said, I give life and cause death. Abraham said, God brings the sun from the east, uh, from the east so bring it from the west. Then he who disbelieved was confounded. God guides not the wrongdoing people. Chapter 2 verse 258 and the sun travels to a resting place for it that is the ordaining of the mighty the knowing chapter 36 verse 38 the sun and moon are traveling there is no question about it in the quran you can go and verify any other translation if you wish god is he who raised up the skies without visible pillars then lifted himself upon the earth he subjected the sun and the moon each traveling for a stated term he arranges the command detailing the signs that you might believe in the encounter with your lord chapter 13 verse 2 and he subjected to you the sun and moon persevering and he subjected to you the night and the day chapter 14 verse 33 Hast thou not observed how God makes the night enter into the day, and makes the day enter into the night? And he subjected the sun and the moon, each traveling for a stated term, and that God of what you do is aware. Chapter 31, verse 29. It says specifically that he subjected the sun and the moon, each traveling for a stated term. So they are both moving together. By the sun and its brightness, and the moon when it follows it. Chapter 91, verses 1 and 2. It is not fitting for the sun to overtake the moon, and nor does the night outstrip the day, and each is in a circuit swimming. Chapter 36, verse 40. Both of these uh, sets of verses are do not make any sense if we are believing in a heliocentric model. But they do make sense if we understand that the sun and moon are both on, a same, on the same track, and they are both following each other. Now, the Quran is clear that the sun and the moon are both producing their own light. And I am indebted to Brother Garens for this insight. Science would have us believe that the moon is reflecting the light of the sun. But that's not what the Quran says. Blessed is he who has appointed in the sky constellations and appointed in it a lamp and an illuminating moon. Chapter 25, verse 61. Have you not observed how God created seven skies one upon another, and he appointed the moon an illumination in them, and appointed the sun a lamp? Chapter 71, verses 15 and 16. It is he who appointed the sun a radiance, and the moon an illumination, and measured it by phases that you might know the number of years and count. God has not created that except with the truth. He details the signs for people who know. Chapter 10, verse 5. I want to be clear that this word illumination, uh, munawwar, is an active participle. And uh, the Quran is exclusively using that word to show that the moon is giving off its own light. And you can verify this with any translation that you wish. And we appointed a blazing lamp, chapter 78, verse 13. Now, the Islamic calendar is a lunar calendar, but it would surprise you to find that this lunar calendar is not based in the Quran because the Islamic calendar is deficient. It does not track with the seasons and therefore drifts with time and is therefore useless for practical purposes, that is agriculture. So, atheists jump in and say, hey, did God give Muslims a calendar that's deficient? The answer is no. The Quran's calendar is a loony solar calendar. It uses both the sun and the moon, and therefore it tracks with seasons, and more importantly, it can be used for practical purposes, that is agriculture. Breaker of dawn, and he appointed the night for rest, and the sun and the moon for reckoning. That is the ordaining of the mighty, the knowing. Chapter 6, verse 96. It is he who appointed the sun a radiance, and the moon an illumination, and measured it by phases that you might know the number of years and count. God has not created that except with the truth. He details the signs for people who know. 
chapter 10, verse 5. The sun and moon, according to a reckoning, chapter 55, verse 5. And the moon, we have measured it by phases until it returns like an aged date stock, chapter 36, verse 39. And the moon, when it is full, chapter 84, verse 18. Now let's talk about the stars. Science would have us believe that the sun is like the countless other stars in the galaxy, in the universe, etc. But that is not what the Quran states. The Quran is clear that the stars and sun are two different categories. It uses different words for them as well. Stars is Najm and sun is Shams. God created the stars as a decoration for the lower sky and as beacons to help with navigation and they guard the lower sky from Satan's and it is he who appointed for you the stars that you may be guided by them in the darkness of the ground and the ocean we have detailed the signs for a people who know chapter 6 verse 97 by the star when it fell chapter 53 verse 1 and landmarks and by the stars they are guided chapter 16 verse 16 so no, I swear by the position of the stars, and it is a great oath if you but knew. Chapter 56, verses 75 and 76. So what is this great oath that is being taken by the position of the stars? It is because of the position of the stars that celestial navigation is possible. If we were not able to predict the position of the stars with accuracy, then we could not have used those methods to calculate where we are on the land. Blessed is he who has appointed in the sky constellations and appointed in it a lamp and an illuminating moon, chapter 25, verse 61. By the sky full of constellations, chapter 85, verse 1. By the sky and the shore of the path, and what could make thee know what the shore of the path is? The piercing star, chapter 86, verses 1 to 3. And he is the Lord of Sirius, chapter 53, verse 49. Now, it is my view that this Sirius, which is a star, is uh, not only one of occultic significance, but it is also one of the brightest stars in the sky. And it is that shore of the path, because it is used for celestial navigation. So, in conclusion, the claims of science regarding the sun, moon, and stars are utterly irreconcilable with the Quran. Whereas the claims of science are not verifiable with our senses, the claims of the Quran are. If you are interested in more, you can download my short book, which is available from willionarreason.com. Until the next time, peace and God bless.